Excuse me, little dog. Ah. <coughs> Hi, guys. It is a pleasant winter evening here in the closing days of May 2024 here at Bugs and a Jar Farm. It is now a, I think it is a Wednesday night. It is May 29th. It will be June in a couple of days, and I think it's heading into the low 40s here tonight at Bugs and a Jar Farm. Good Lord, so I am hiding out where I actually have heat. Got my heater blaring tonight, me and the little dog. So anyway, guys, I'm sitting here in the going over the mainstream media, uh, thinking about irony <clears throat> and what makes a story funny. Uh, you know, I am a, a great appreciator of irony, of ironic absurdity or absurdist irony of the human condition. So, I'm going to uh, read out three stories to you. <clears throat> I consider one of these three stories to be fucking hilarious, okay? Now, all three of the stories gave me, you know, a warm, fuzzy feeling. So they all left me, you know, in, in, in all of this uh, never-ending... <coughs> doom and gloom and bad news on the mainstream media. At least these are all three, you know, can be interpreted as good news, I guess. They, they do leave uh, a doomer with a smile on his face, but one of these three is, is not just mildly humorous, it's fucking hilarious. So uh, we're going to take a quiz. We're going to see how many people know how to read the mainstream media and figure out, you know, number one, to identify irony. <clears throat> Can you identify, I don't know, just the state of the human condition? And can you identify just, just just fucking funny so uh we're gonna make a test Wh which one of these stories is an example of uh one of these stories is just an example of karma uh <coughs> so we've we've got karma we've got uh, the state of the human condition, and we have got outright fucking hilarious. All of them, uh, irony. Let's, so uh, we're, we're going to go back. This story actually, uh, happened in January, but it came up as a link inside another story. <clears throat> Okay. Man dies after crawling into plane engine at Salt Lake City Airport. A 30-year-old man died after he climbed into a plane engine at Salt Lake City International Airport on Monday night. <coughs> Kyle Effinger, a resident of Park City, Utah, breached an emergency exit ran to the south end of the airport's west runway where de-icing operations were underway and, quote, crawled into an aircraft engine, an airport official said. Police later said the aircraft's engines were rotating and, quote, the specific stage of engine operations remain under investigation. It wasn't immediately clear why Effinger, 
who police said was a ticketed passenger with a boarding pass to Denver, climbed into the plane engine. The plane, a Delta Airlines flight from Salt Lake City to San Francisco, returned to the gate, blah, blah, blah. Uh, police did not release the man's calls of death. He, he, he uh, the man climbed into a running airplane engine. The police did not re, uh, reveal his calls of death. Maybe his calls of death was climbing into a running airplane engine. <coughs> Just saying. Okay. That's option one. Is that, uh, is that karma? Is it human condition? Or is it funny as shit? Okay. Our next ironic story from USA Today, and this did happen recently, Lightning strike kills Colorado cattle rancher and 34 of his herd. A Colorado cattle rancher and 34 of his cattle have been killed after lightning struck over the weekend, according to the Jackson County Sheriff's Office. Mike Morgan age 51, was feeding some of his herd with hay from a trailer on Sunday when the lightning hit near the town of Rand, about 80 miles north of Denver. Morgan died <clears throat> despite life-saving efforts. Yes, the strike also bowled over bowled over dozens more cattle gathered around the trailer waiting to eat. Okay, so the planet is now, uh, we have one less Colorado cattle rancher and 34 fewer uh, uh, beef cattle on the planet. This is a real loss to the planet. Uh, so what do we got? Was that an example of the state of the human condition on the planet? Uh, is, is it, uh, what was the second choice? Is it karma? Is the irony karma? Or is it just a funny as shit story that that some fucking scumbag uh, Colorado beef rancher, no doubt a Trump tard, probably fully supports killing wolves and, and all the rest of it. Uh, this clueless fucking moron uh, getting struck by lightning uh, while you know, obviously, it it it, it is it, it warms the cockles of a doomer's heart. How funny is that? That lightning struck this uh, scumbag uh, Colorado rancher. Okay, and now let's get to the third story. The third story in this uh, in this series: passenger dies after jumping off, not not falling off, after jumping off. <coughs> World's largest cruise ship as it sets sail from Florida. And there you go. A passenger has died after jumping overboard 
from the world's largest cruise ship after it set sail from Florida. The male passenger who has not been identified reportedly jumped from the 20 deck, the 20 deck high icon of the seas after it left a Florida port on Sunday to embark on a seven day cruise around the Caribbean, first stopping in Honduras. There, 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 there you go, stopping in Honduras. The Coast Guard, who said they did not have much involvement in the incident beyond assisting in the search for the man, said that, quote, the cruise ship deployed one of their rescue boats, located the man, and brought him back aboard. The man has since been, quote, pronounced dead. The Coast Guard added, yes, the world's largest cruise experience the world's largest cruise experience was approximately 300 miles away from Miami and around 30 to 40 miles north of Santa Lucia, Cuba at the time of the incident. Um, the Royal Caribbean, which operates the icon of the seas, along with other groundbreakingly large cruise ships, told the outlet in a statement that their ship's crew immediately notified the Coast Guard. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, quote, our care team is actively providing support and assistance to the guests' loved ones during this difficult time. Yes, the icon of the seas, and this is a direct quote from the mainstream media from Yahoo News, the ship which holds way over, which holds way over 5,000 guests and only made its maiden voyage in January of this year had embarked on the cruise on Saturday. Yes, and I guess the uh, the dude jumped to his death off the twenty-story tall <coughs> floating uh, monument to clueless fucking morons, um, and then the the I guess the, I don't know what they did with it, this dude's body before sailing off to Costa Maya, Mexico. The incident comes over a month after a similar tragedy on another Royal Caribbean cruise ship, the Liberty of the Seas, when a 20-year-old man identified as Levon Parker is thought to have gone overboard during a trip around the Bahamas the cruise line immediately launched a search and rescue mission along with the Coast Guard, but it was suspended after five days due to not being able to find him. There you go. And then they say at the bottom, if you are experiencing feelings of distress or are struggling to cope, yes you can uh, visit the, or you can speak to the Samaritans. Yes. Chat from the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. There you go. You know, I ought to call the, that number sometime and talk to one of these uh, these suicide people <laughs> and recorded. Uh, okay, it was that story 
funny as shit. Yes, that story was fucking hilarious. The, 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 this motherfucker, uh, he, 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 you know, climbing into a running plane engine uh, to fucking take yourself out is, is, is just, you know, while there are some elements of black humor to it, it's basically just a, a, you know, a statement on the, 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 the state of humanity in the year 2024. And then, of course, uh, that, that scumbag uh, Colorado beef rancher uh, having a bolt of lightning uh, come out of the sky fucking take him out and 34 of his goddamn clueless cows. Uh, while that is ironic, that, that, that lends itself more to an example of karma. Uh, you know, getting, it would be somewhat similar, you know, to me dying by a hemlock tree falling on me. Uh, you know, if I end up dying by a, by a hemlock tree falling on me and killing me, <coughs> that would be similar to a bolt of lightning, uh, killing that beef cattle rancher, but, uh, but, but you know, uh, <laughs> some, some guy... Uh, some, some clueless fucking moron uh, getting on the world's largest cruise ship, uh, the Icon of the Seas, a 20-story cruise ship. That I, I think it's like 7,000 clueless fucking morons that, uh, that that goddamn piece of shit holds. You know, this motherfucker uh, aiming for the single biggest cruise ship on the planet. You know, as how many rants have I had about the, the cruise industry being the single most indefensible uh, industry on the planet. The, 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 the entire reason that the cruise ship industry exists on this planet is because we are a planet of clueless fucking morons. And, you know, people going on there, uh, <laughs> you know, these clueless fucking morons to, to, to party away. <clears throat> and this guy... Uh, correctly making the right decision to board the world's largest cruise ship and take a fucking uh, swan dive off the 20th story. Uh, could you imagine what that splash sounded like? So, uh, it's a good start. And it certainly, uh, gave me something to smile about. Uh, here on the... <laughs> in the collapse of everything. Anyway, with that good news to uh, brighten your evening, uh, the little dog and I are going to turn the heater back on. And call it a night. What do you think that I'm There's a bump. I've already called it a night. You woke me up. Are you ready to go back to bed? I'm ready to go back to bed. You never should have gotten me up for this rant. Bye, guys.